everyone and welcome to Maple Leaf ESL. My name is Andrew and thank you for joining me here in the classroom today. For today's grammar lesson, I want to take a look at using different contrasting ideas. Specifically, we're going to look at even though, although, despite, in spite of, nevertheless, and nonetheless. Of course, I want to look at the meanings and some examples of each, as well as making sure that we understand the differences in each of their grammatical structures. Okay, let's see if we can start with even though and although. Okay, remember, even though and although are basically the same thing, they have the same meaning, and we use them in grammatically the same way. The biggest difference is that even though is a little more emphatic. So if I want to emphasize or stress my point, then I use even though. With although, often it's considered a little bit more formal, so perhaps in more formal situations I might use although, although really I could use although in everyday speech. Okay, let's take a look at some examples. So for the first one I put there, even though I just ate a big lunch, I'm still hungry. Okay, let's think about that. So when we're contrasting these two ideas, when we look at our main clause, which is I'm still hungry, we can see that that is contrasted with I just ate a big lunch. Okay, well, if we think about somebody who just ate a big lunch, we don't expect them to still be hungry. However, I am still hungry. So we often use even though to show that it's the opposite of what we expect. Often the information is surprising. Okay, let's look at another example. Even though I got no sleep last night, I'm not tired at all. Okay, well again, this is not what we would expect. If somebody got no sleep last night, then we expect them to be tired. However, I'm not tired at all. So this is the opposite of what we expect. So again, we use even though to contrast ideas that we don't expect. Okay, in addition, if we take a look at the grammar, we can see after even though, I've got a subject, I, and then I've got a verb, ate. Okay, same thing with the next one. I've got a subject, again, I, and our verb there is got. So in both cases, I followed even though with a subject and a verb. Okay, that's important because we're going to compare that to some of the other structures. Okay, let's take a look at although. So again, as I said, they're grammatically the same and they have the same basic meaning. So first example, although I was late, the boss didn't seem to mind. Okay, again here, usually when you're late, the boss cares or the boss minds. So if the boss didn't seem to mind, well, that's the opposite of what we expect. Okay, and one more example here, this time with though. Though it's raining outside, I feel like going for a walk. Okay, again, not what we expect. If it's raining outside, most people don't want to go for a walk. Okay, notice this time instead of using although, I use though. So though is often more informal and is more common in spoken English than it is in written English. Okay, and I included one more example at the end just to highlight one other main difference. I put here, I went to the party although I didn't really want to. Okay, again, this is just being used in the same way, but one thing I want to point out here is that when we start with our dependent clause, which in this first sentence is, although I was late, we must follow it by a comma. And then comes the main clause, the boss didn't seem to mind. Okay, in our last example here, I started with the main clause, which is, I went to the party, and then I concluded with the dependent clause, which is, although I didn't really want to. And therefore, I don't need to include a comma. So if I start with the main clause, comma is not necessary. But if I start with the dependent clause, as I did in most of these sentences, then I do need a comma. Okay, let's see if we can compare this to some of the other contrasting ideas next. All right, let's see if we can take a look at despite and in spite of next. Okay, remember with despite and in spite of, they're exactly the same, although notice, that with in spite of, we've got of following it, but with despite, we don't need any prepositions. So we're not going to say despite of or something else like that. But over here, we must say in spite of. So other than that, they're pretty much the same thing. They use the same grammatical structures and they have the same meaning. And remember with the meaning, as I said with even though and although, it shows the opposite of what we expect. Okay, let's look at some examples. So I put here, despite my illness, I attended the party. Okay, so again, if, if somebody's sick, 
you don't expect them to go to the party. You expect them to stay home. But I did the opposite of that. I attended the party. So again, opposite of expectations, and it's a little bit surprising. Okay, one more example here. Despite feeling sick, she went to work. So again, same thing. When somebody's sick, it's probably better that they stay home, but she went to work. Okay, now, if we compare this to even though and although, if you remember, I had said after both even though and although, we need a subject and we need a verb. Okay, well, you should notice here with despite, we do not follow despite with a subject. In fact, it either goes to a noun or a noun phrase, as I've done in this case, my illness. Okay, or it can take a verb, but the verb must be in gerund form, as I wrote there, despite feeling sick. Remember, a gerund is a verb plus ing. Okay, but similar to even though and although, when we start with the dependent clause, we need a comma before we go to the main clause. And of course, if we started with the main clause, then we don't need a comma before despite or in front of in spite of. And let's take a look at in spite of next. In spite of the weather, they went for a hike. Okay, again, in this case, when we say in spite of the weather, we mean that the weather was bad. So of course, most people don't go hiking in bad weather. They usually try and go in good weather. So it's the opposite of what we expect. Okay, and one more here. In spite of being the youngest, she won the game. So perhaps being the youngest, especially if you're a child, might be a disadvantage, and yet she won the game. Okay, and again, notice in my two examples there, in spite of the weather, the weather is a noun, and down here, in spite of being the youngest, so being is a gerund. Okay, one more thing we can do with this structure, you gotta remember that we can also put in a possessive pronoun. So I could say, in spite of her being the youngest, she won the game. Of course, her is not really necessary in this case, because in the main clause, I've already indicated that she is the subject. So again, not quite necessary. But if I wanted to put that possessive pronoun in to be extra clear, I could. It fits grammatically. Okay, let's see if we can turn here to nevertheless and nonetheless. Okay, again, it's a contrasting idea, so it's used to show the opposite of what we expect, but you'll see here the grammatical structure is a little different. So let's read this one here. I gave him all the correct answers, nevertheless, he still failed the test. Okay, well you'd think if you give somebody all the answers that they're gonna pass the test, but this person didn't. Okay, one thing you should notice here is that we can't use either uh, nevertheless or nonetheless to connect ideas within one sentence. We must join them between two sentences. So I must have a sentence first. I gave him all the correct answers, period. And now I'm gonna contrast it with nevertheless that starts a new sentence. And again, as you'll see there, is followed by a comma. Okay, and then I have the contrasting idea. Okay, same thing if we look in the next example. They spent many hours preparing for their vacation. Nonetheless, they forgot their camera. Okay, again, if we look at its grammatical structure, I had to have an idea first, followed by a period, then a new sentence, nonetheless comma, and then the idea that contrasts it. Again, if we go back up here, well, the contrast was all within one sentence and was separated by a comma. In fact, we do not want to separate these by a period because then those ideas would be incomplete. Those are, those are what are called fragment sentences. So that is poor English grammar and we don't want to do that. Okay, well speaking of errors, I want to see if we can erase the whiteboard and I want to take a look at some common errors that are used with these structures. Okay, let's look at some of these common errors. Okay, you'll see that I mentioned some of this stuff before, but I want to go over it again. I commonly see these ones in written English and I hear them in spoken English as well. Okay, let's look at the first one there. I wrote, even though I set my alarm, period, I woke up late. Okay, well, this is an incorrect way to use this grammar. So remember, even though I set my alarm, that is now an incomplete sentence and what we would call a fragment sentence. That is not correct. So remember, we need to start, we need to connect these two sentences with a comma. So even though I set my alarm, comma, I woke up late. So now that is correct. Okay, next one, I wanted to see the movie, period, although, comma, 
he didn't. Well, again, this is incorrect. Okay, the first sentence, I wanted to see the movie. Well, that sentence is okay. But then although comma, well, this is the way we would use however. But we do not start a sentence with although comma. So that is incorrect. So if we want to do this correctly, I wanted to see the movie, although he didn't. And again, because we started with the main clause, we do not require a comma before the dependent clause. Okay, next one. Despite I don't eat meat, I went to a steakhouse for dinner. Okay, this is definitely one of the most common mistakes that I see with despite. So remember the rule after despite, we do not want to follow that with a subject. Okay, we want to cut that all together. So the new sentence should look like, despite not eating meat, I went to a steakhouse for dinner. Okay, so again, now my verb is in the gerund form. And if I want to put the negative, you'll notice that the negative goes between despite and the gerund. Okay, however, one thing I want to mention is that if we really do want to use the subject with despite, we can put Despite the fact that I don't eat meat, I went to a steakhouse for dinner. So that is possible, but it must be despite the fact that, and then we can include a subject. Okay, one more example I wanna look at. In spite of causing cancer, I like smoking. Okay, well, when you look at this for the first time, you're thinking, hmm, Andrew, what's wrong with this one? It seems to follow the rule. We've got a gerund afterward. We've got our comma before our main clause, so it looks correct. However, we must remember that the subject in the dependent clause, which is this one, in spite of causing cancer, must be the same as in the main clause which it is not because we can see in the main clause, the subject is I. But what we mean is that smoking causes cancer, not I cause cancer. So the new sentence should look like, in spite of causing cancer, smoking is popular. Now we'll notice that smoking is the subject of both sentences, though in this first half, of course, in the dependent clause, we don't directly say it, we, we don't say it until the main clause, which is why the first sentence with I would be incorrect because again, I do not cause cancer. Good. Okay, and again, I didn't include an example, a common error with nonetheless or nevertheless. Just remember that with nonetheless and nevertheless, we must start a new sentence and then put nevertheless, comma. We cannot connect them within one sentence as we can with even though or as we can with despite. Okay, so just keep that in mind. Well, I hope all of my examples and the definitions were easy to understand. Thank you so much for joining me here at Maple Leaf ESL, and I look forward to seeing you again next time.